The University of Oxford confirmed that the COVID-19 vaccine it's developing with AstraZeneca produced strong immune responses in older adults. Now, the results were published in the Lancet Medical Journal. And joining us to discuss this is Editor-in-Chief Dr. Richard Horton. Dr. Horton, thanks for joining us on Quick Take. Why is the preliminary data an important step when it comes to vaccine development? Well, the Oxford data are an important step because, unfortunately, it's the case that in older citizens, vaccines don't always provoke strong immune responses. Just as the body gets older, so the immune system gets older and doesn't always work as well. But what the findings we published yesterday showed was that, in fact, with their vaccine, there was a very strong immune response both uh, an a, a antibody response and what we call a T-cell response. And that's exactly what we need to see. So we're now, it's, it's only one further step and we need to wait for the final results in a couple of weeks, but it's a very important step at, because th this older group in our population is of course the ones most at risk from COVID-19. And the elderly are particularly difficult to vaccinate, right doctor, why is that? Well, the reason why it's difficult, as I say, is they, that, that often there's this phenomenon called immunosenescence. The immune system, as it gets older, doesn't function as well. And so when you give a vaccine to an older person, they don't generate the immunity that you hope they will generate. But what we see from, this, from the Oxford vaccine, and we also saw it from the BioNTech vaccine, uh, in fact, the immune response in older people is very strong. So I think this is why I th we should be cautiously optimistic that we are going to have vaccines to roll out in the new year that will be effective in those most at risk. The word optimistic is, is something I like to hear in 2020. Uh, take us through how where, where this vaccine candidate is at this point compared to some of the other big names that we've heard from. Pfizer, Moderna, because those are done with stage, stage three trials. But when it comes to the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, it's only at stage two, correct? Right. So we have 11 vaccines that are in stage three. You've heard about the Moderna vaccine, which is an mRNA vaccine, the BioNTech vaccine, which is mRNA. The Oxford vaccine is a slightly different vaccine. Um, it's not mRNA. It delivers the famous spike protein from the coronavirus using a recombinant adenoviral vector. Uh, in other words, an inactivated virus that enables the spike protein to provoke the immune system. Now, this is a phase st two study that we published yesterday, but the phase three study is already ongoing and almost complete. We're definitely going to have the final results of that before the holiday season, even perhaps in the next two to three weeks. So we will know very shortly if we've got a second category of coronavirus vaccines that is going to be ready to go in the new year. The mRNA vaccines that you mentioned haven't ever been used in, in humans before. Um, but the, the type that the Oxford and, and AstraZeneca, that has, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the mRNA vaccine, nobody actually um, believed at the beginning. If, you, if you'd asked me at the beginning of this year, could we have an mRNA vaccine that would be effective? I would have been extremely skeptical. People have been working on these categories of vaccines for a decade with very little success. So it's really astonishing that, that the first time uh, there's been an attempt to produce a vaccine for an infectious disease, it's not only worked, but worked spectacularly well. Over 90%, nobody would have bet on that. So yeah, it's a it's a great success. There are some there are some challenges because it's a new technology, uh, and this is of course the fact that you have to store the vaccine in minus seventy degrees for the BioNTech mRNA vaccine. But nevertheless, it, nothing takes away from the fact that it's a huge step forward, and it will be a useful vaccine, especially in those settings like the United States or the United Kingdom, where you do have those deep freeze facilities. Doctor, how do you envision this pandemic ending? What does it look like, given that we are getting a lot of very positive vaccine news right now? And it's at least my understanding, and I think public health officials have really confirmed this, that perhaps halfway through 2021 is when we will see widespread vaccination. What does that look like to you? Yeah, we really need to be managing expectations here. It's super exciting where we are now, because we can see light at the end of the tunnel. But 
there are some big challenges. You've got to get these vaccines through the regulator. I'm sure that will be done. We've got to be 100% clear that we've checked the safety of these vaccines. We can't afford to cut any corners. Then we've got to manufacture the vaccines. And there are seven over 7 billion people on this planet. These vaccines are given as two doses. That means that we have to produce 15 billion doses of wow. vaccine. That's never been done in the history of vaccines. It's just enormous. So, but let's say that we, in, the, in as we roll through 2021, we've decided who we're going to give the vaccine to first, those most at risk, older people, those who are on the front lines in our society, uh, working in schools or mass transit or food. I think what we're trying to do now is we're trying to get those people vaccinated by spring. And then over the summer, we roll out more vaccination to the rest of the population. So what we're really doing is we're preparing to go into the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere of 2021 fully protected. So I think we need to sort of think about this as an eight or nine month strategy to take us to this time next year. Lancet Medical Journal Editor-in-Chief, Dr. Richard Horton. Uh, we are really grateful for you joining us on Quick Take today. Thanks so much. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.